What if I told you that AI was the future? I don't think you'd be surprised. I mean, Judgment Day is coming soon anyway, right? Skynet, those weird robots that Boston Dynamics keep making. That recent episode of Black Mirror. Every single day, we see advancements in not just hardware and computing, but artificial intelligence. Very scary, but very cool at the same time. But what about AI in a Battlefield game. If I talked to you about an EA division called Seed, I doubt you would have heard of it. I can't say it's really that familiar to me either, but I found a little bit about it and it stands for Search for Extraordinary Experiences Division. Honestly, it sounds a bit like a division from an alien film, but it seems that the goal of this division is to come up with cool and interesting technology and stuff that you can do in video games, kind of. But recently, they showed off and built a self-learning AI that can play Battlefield 1. Now, I don't think that Skynet's priority right now is video games, but if you do have an underground bunker, then you best get prepping. So recently, at the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco, EA showed off an example of this AI on their YouTube channel. DICE have collaborated with Seed to produce an AI that can learn to play Battlefield 1 from scratch. And these self-learning agents get into the game and they learn simply by playing. They teach themselves how to play the game. And in the video that they show, it's explained that every player that you see is controlled by one single neural network that's teaching itself how to play the game from scratch, just through trial and error. In this example, they also added supplies all around the map with health and ammo so that the bots or agents, although I'm not sure I like calling them AI agents, haven't they seen The Matrix? But they put these green and brown boxes in the game and put health and ammo inside them. And overall, it looks like it works. The AI use weapons like normal players. They head towards health pickups if they're low on health. They jump around. They do what you would expect them to do. Each time they play, they learn, in fact. Everything they do is a direct result of learning from previous games. It's just an ever-evolving AI, much like how a human works, I suppose. Valve did a similar thing with Dota 2. They actually had self-learning bots play the game again and again and again until eventually they could actually beat the pros in 1v1 mid lane. Crazy. Now, when we play games, our brain should remember things we did that worked and, of course, things that went horribly wrong. And then we should attempt to replicate the good stuff while not repeating the bad. Of course, humans are not machines, though, and we're not an ever-evolving machine that just learns and learns and never makes the same mistake twice. Now, don't get me wrong, this AI is not perfect by their own admission. Also, it must be very hard to make an entire server of artificial intelligence and expect it to go off without a hitch. The bots get easily confused, they run around in circles, and even when you watch in first person, you can see how janky it looks, because you can never get the fluidity from a bot that you can from a human player. In fact, in most games that I've seen bots in, especially in first person shooters like CSGO, the AI never really plays exactly like a human would in terms of aiming, because AI is so fundamentally perfect. That human error factor is not there. In CSGO, professional players never have perfect aim and never will, or they'll never have a perfect AK-47 spray every single time. No matter how good you are, you're going to make mistakes. To get a truly real AI, I think it needs to have an element of error, but then surely they aren't going to be self-learning if you're tweaking them and holding them back from being as good as they can be. You've got a slight issue too with how good do you make them. If they're machines, that means theoretically that they can perfectly control recoil, and they'll know that you're coming around a corner before you even do. Of course, when it's just AI playing against AI, that doesn't really matter, but if you wanted to use them in other scenarios, then that would be something that it's going to have to be worked on. This whole scenario brings up some interesting talking points and ideas though. I think right now this is just an exploratory idea to see what benefits this could have for future game development. I don't think this is something being developed so that we can have bots in the next Battlefield game, although that would be really cool. It's far beyond that. This is thinking much more advanced than that. Having said that, bots in a Battlefield game is not a new idea. BF2 had bots that you could load up and play with, but it's important to remember the difference. These seed agents are self-learning, so they're learning how to play Battlefield 1 after being provided with a very basic set of parameters. And that's vastly different from an AI developer coding an artificial intelligence bot to do certain actions and telling them when to do them. These agents are actually learning this all for themselves, which is both amazing and a little scary too. 
So hypothetically, imagine 6 to 12 months down the line this system was developed enough that you could load into the next Battlefield game and play a practice game against these agents or bots in a multiplayer map. You could set their skill level so you didn't get too much of a challenge or an easy ride and just learn the maps at your own pace. Incursions could be a really good example of how this could be used. They recently added in a sort of tutorial mode but it doesn't have AI bots but simple basic enemy targets that you can shoot. So if in a 5v5 environment you could play and practice against say 5 enemy agents that could be a pretty interesting way to learn the maps and modes. Perhaps it could be used as a system to fill servers before real players join the game. And I know it's slightly different, but if you join a CSGO deathmatch for example, it's usually filled with bots if it's an empty server. And then when real players join, they take the place of one of the bots until eventually all the bots are gone and the server is filled with real people. It could be at least an interesting concept for server admins. Honestly though, that's not even the most exciting possibility for something like this. Let's look at this technology from a different perspective. Imagine for a second how many hours it takes for players to find certain bugs and glitches in a game like Battlefield 1. No matter how many hours of QA testing and CTE you give a game like Battlefield, you're only going to really find the big glitches and bugs when hundreds or thousands of players are playing every single day and the servers are full. Now what if you could just run servers full of these agents instead at the studio before the game is released that would just play out Battlefield games consistently every day during testing? And this could let you find some amazing things. Vaulting bugs where you've got a double vault to get over objects. If players are getting stuck in map geometry it could help identify those areas. Bugs with weapon shooting, reloading, even map balance. Heat maps for instance could help perhaps identify early on where maps need tweaking. If you were to put 32 self-learning bots versus 32 self-learning bots on a conquest map and they're all the same skill level, you would then run several rounds of the map again and again and again, look at the data, and then perhaps you could see, okay, this map is more favoured to team A than team B, so perhaps we should edit the geometry a bit or move the flags around. So what we're talking about here is essentially a system of constant playtesting where the developers are going to get an astronomical amount of data that they can use to fix massive bugs and glitches and improve map balance before the game is even out. And for us, the customer, that ultimately means that we get a better product, a better game when it launches. That being said, of course, who knows how far the current seed system would be from something like that. I imagine a long way, but I'm just thinking about how it could be used in the future. Naturally, I'm linking this to Battlefield because of the connection to DICE in this experiment, but Seed is an EA division, so this sort of technology is not limited to Battlefield, although some of the people working on Seed did work on Battlefield games. But in theory, if the core of this AI is self-learning and it can learn to do just about anything, then it could play FIFA. It could play NFL games. It could play all sorts of sports games that have more defined rules than Battlefield. It could even learn racing games like Need for Speed. Again, AI already exists in these games. Of course, you can already play against the computer in FIFA, but is it self-learning? Is it seeing mistakes it's making? And remember, next time, it's not going to do that. So this could mean better, more realistic human AI in every single EA game, let's say. The other issue here, though, is how much computing power is needed to make something like this work. Just thinking about all of the possible actions in a Battlefield game and then the butterfly effect and how one action leads to another action, how much power does it take to run an entire server of these agents at the same time? It may be so much that simply running 10 servers, say for Q&A testing purposes, just isn't realistic, I don't know. A couple of years ago, Google's self-learning AI named AlphaGo managed to beat Chinese player Li Doll at a Chinese board game called Go. Now this dude wasn't just any old player though, he was the 18 time world champion. What's most interesting about this is that this particular Chinese board game is a pretty ancient game considered to be impossible to learn by a computer, at least at the level that it would need to be to beat a world champion. Apparently this game just has so many intricate and elaborate possibilities, but the AlphaGo AI is able to compute tens of thousands of positions a second, and the AI actually beat the champion three games in a row. How it works is very complicated though. It involves training the AI with data such as photos. 
and then getting them to make inferences about new data based on patterns found in the data it's already been given. Similar, I suppose, to how the agents might operate in Battlefield, learning by data from previous experiences. The way AlphaGo works is that it tries to predict which moves to play by researching expert Go players' moves, and then it uses a process of trial and error, just getting smarter by playing itself. Essentially, it's learning what the correct move to play is in almost every scenario. AI is the future of the world, and with Seed, I'm excited to see how this is going to change the gaming industry over the next few years. And that's an important point to make. This technology is something that takes time to develop and nurture. Very cool to see it though, and I'm thankful that EA and Seed showed us a glimpse of this at the Game Developer Conference. Bots in Battlefield 2018 though? Maybe, maybe not. I'd love to see it, we'll see. I think if there were bots in a Battlefield game, then it would be a big missed opportunity not to let the players kind of spawn them into a level and give them commands. Say you want to play on a specific map and have six bots run from side to side at 500, 600, 7 meters away so you can practice your long range headshots or trying to take them out with a tank, whatever. Giving that kind of playground to the players with this AI would be amazing in a Battlefield game. Of course that kind of thing would be all offline and not against real people, but it would be an excellent sandbox for players to train, learn the maps and just get better at the game. Do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below guys and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you in the next one.